let's talk about awnings. If you pull this down, you can see there's a, a curve. I'm going to use this product on the rear half of the awning and the other product on the forward half and we'll find out which one works best. Our awning is one of our favorite accessories on the teardrop trailer. Like most teardrop owners, we like to spend as much time outdoors as we can. And this extends our outdoor living space. It's a shelter for too much rain or too much sunshine. It's something that we like to set up on practically every trip. Uh, we put some string lights around the perimeter, helps to illuminate the camp area. and also keeps uh, leaves and needles and things that may be falling down from the breeze, keeps it out of our food. We have a, a little extending table that we attach to the fender. Typically, we set up our chairs, our fireplace, cooking area, or we cook in the galley, or a combination of the two. Um, it just gives us an area that we can keep a little more secure. Uh, we also have a zip-in wall system for when it, the weather gets severe. Fairly windproof if it's set up properly. One of the first things to consider is the wind direction. If there's going to be wind, uh, you want the awning to be on the leeward side of the trailer. When you're deploying the awning, that's something that's important because it's quite a sail to be spread out. And if the wind is coming here, it's going to lift. And that's what happens. Catastrophes with awnings are typically they get bent over uh, backwards. Another reason why we want to set up camp this way is uh, the campfire. If there's going to be a campfire, it's going to be over here. And we don't want the smoke to be drifting back into our camp area. We want it to be moving away from the trailer, um, away from the windows that we may have open for ventilation. Uh, we just want the smoke to be traveling away. <laughs> This is a 180 degree awning and you'll see how it can be managed uh, with one person with no problem at all. The first thing we want to do before we unzip it is to get out our straps and be ready to attach the endpoints. To keep things simple, uh, we keep all of our straps in one zipper bag. Whenever I'm setting up camp uh, or working with the awning, I like to glove up. Let's get started and unzip this. It's important to fold the bag all the way over onto the back side of the awning. If you don't, there's a gap between the awning and the trailer. And if it, if it does rain, you're going to get rain coming down through here. There's a small gap, so that gets covered by the uh, cover of the awning when it flips over. You can clamp this part down so it won't go anywhere. We can take a look at step two, which is going to be pull the straps. This rolls down. Just be mindful of the fact that if it's windy out, this is the only part you're going to want to move. You don't want to open the whole thing up. So this one here, we're going to bring it around. Obviously, it attaches to the back side. That gets pulled taut. Here's where we attach our awning. This is the, the first half. The second half is still folded up. The next thing we can do if it's windy out is deploy this pole and stake this point down. Our peg hammer and all the pegs in one bag. We have two different types of pegs here. We typically use um, these, which came with the awning or lighter weight 
um, aluminum style that also work really well. So we're dealing with this 180 degree awning one half at a time. We don't want to pull the whole thing out and have it flapping around in the wind. If the ground conditions allow, you really want to have this line running perpendicular from the support. How this type of thing works is a bottom loop that you can pull and that will adjust the tension. Just put it into the ground with a little bit of slack. By the way, I really like this lightweight hammer. It has a hollow handle and a little bit of weight on the working end. It's got a nice design, some anti-slip on the face, and uh, a nice design for pulling the tent stakes uh, with the claw end. You can look for a link for this hammer in the description area of the video. Then you can adjust the tension. You want these pretty taut, especially if it's going to be windy out. If the winds are predicted, driving rain, and that's when you really want to have your awning because if you're going to be outside at all, you don't want to be standing around in raincoats and umbrellas. If it's going to be severe, you can take a second line, connect it here, and use two stakes and sprawl them out. If there's gust and you happen to get lift, it'll give you two supports rather than just one. There's an intermediate tie down point right here. It's very important to use that if it's going to rain because without having this pulled down the water is just going to puddle right here and just add more and more weight to the top of the awning. If you pull this down you can see there's a, a curve and it'll cause the water to drain off the end of this and uh, it makes your camp area underneath the awning keeps it drier, safer, and you won't have a catastrophe of water all of a sudden unloading and falling off the awning. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh my God. The very next thing that we would do in severe winds is to set up our auxiliary support pole. We have a pole that can go right here, and that'll help stabilize the end of the awning. Let's talk about snow load. If there's going to be snowfall, a few inches of snow, that's going to be hundreds of pounds on top of the awning. And there's just no way around it. It would be smart. Take it down. If there's no wind predicted, if it's going to be a calm day, if we're going to be around camp, then we don't add the guy line. Now that the first half of the awning has been secured, we can do the second half. If it's windy out, you're going to want to keep hold of this free end of the awning. And once again, you want to pull the strap nice and taut. As soon as we get this in taut, we want to deploy the support pole. And then add the guy line. down on the line as you push up on the locking device. Here's a tip for staking things down in loose soil like this soft sand. You don't need a special tent stake. Just create a girth hitch around the stake near the center and then we're going to use a technique known as a dead man which is simply to bury the stake into the sand. Oh 
it's important to adjust the girth hitch so it's in the center of the stake and bury it horizontal. And that's the dead man technique. Now that this side is secure, if it was extremely windy, we can add this secondary pole off of the end. put away the awning, just reverse the process. All of the material needs to be pulled down to a point so it can be neatly rolled up. Otherwise, it's not gonna fit back in the bag. There are two straps that need to be exposed before this is rolled up back and one in the front all the material is pulled down to a point and then it's simply rolled up If it's been raining out, be careful when you flip the cover back over or you're liable to get some water in your face. And that's it. You don't really need to stand on the fenders uh, as long as you have some reach. If you don't, I mean, it, it can be helpful, uh, but typically I don't need to stand on the fenders. Uh, One of the reasons why I set up the awning was also to air it out. The last time we used it, there was a lot of rain. Uh, it did get a chance to dry out some. I flipped as much water off the panel as I could. Then I wiped it down what I could reach with a towel, but it's still a little bit damp. I'm gonna let it dry out and um, I've noticed that, uh, like a lot of uh, water repellent material, it starts to lose its effectiveness over time. So it's time to uh, recondition the fabric to make it more waterproof. I have two types of waterproof spray, and I'm going to test them out. The way this is going to work, I'm going to use this product on the rear half of the awning and the other product on the forward half and we'll find out which one works best. Mm -hmm. 